Uh, I would like to introduce you now um, a cave sanctuary for Dionysos and the Nymphs, and we're going to northern Greece in Califea on Chakidiki. Uh, my introduction is based on the paper of Ioannis Milonopoulos with the title Nature as Sanctuary and Nature in the Sanctuary. And since <coughs> Neolithic times, caves in Greece were intensely used. During that time, they served as grave sites and only rarely as shelters or dwellings. Uh, a religious connotation through the connection with the underworld can be attested already at this early date. The notion of caves as a transcendental place between the two worlds um, was quite present in the human mind. Numerous caves were associated with gates to the underworld, like the sanctuary of uh, Demeter in Eloises, or the sanctuary of Poseidon at Cape Tainaron in Laconia. Uh, however, these are really important or prominent examples, let's say, that belonged to a sanctuary complex, but not served as independent cave sanctuaries. Uh, the most known one is maybe the cave um, of Zeus on Mount Ida on Crete, where Rhea was hiding baby Zeus from Kronos, and just to give you an overview, um, what we have from the most known or most prominent examples, the god that was most frequent worshipped was not Zeus, uh, but Pan from the 4th century. And his cult was widespread in Arcadia and Attica. Um, and we know above Delphi, we have Mount Panassos, there was a cave for Pan and the Nymphs, the so-called Corycaean cave. <clears throat> and before I want to continue, just the question, but what makes a cave sacred? Um, because we're always talking about this in this context. And so I want to go maybe a step back to keep this in mind. Um, as Mikia Eyade stated, a place in general receives a sacred value simply through his appearance and natural features. And with focus on caves, we have a look on the words of Robert Wegman. He was saying, um, there were no set criteria in antiquity for designating a cave as sacred. The selection was based on the randomness of local tradition, nonetheless the existence of certain attributes like running water, shade, and pleasantly scanted vegetation could, could be interpreted as a sign of divine presence. So coming back to Milonopoulos also, he's saying that just the human activity transformed those places into a sacred place. So not every cave uh, we have was turned into a sanctuary, but every cave had the uh, potential to be come one. So, and with all this information, I would like to travel with you all now, sorry, <laughs> to uh, Shakidiki, um, which is located in northern Greece, and to show you the cave um, of Dionysos and the Nymphs. And this site I'm talking about now is part of my research project. Uh, which is based at the University of Basel and is founded by the Swiss National Science Foundation and it's called Cults and Sanctuaries on Shakiki. And here you have a map and these all my places I focus on. And I have just one cave. And just because I think no one knows Shakidiki so much, um, just a basic introduction. It's a peninsula. It's a trident-like shape, as you can see, uh, with the three fingers, we say it in German, or the three legs, it's called in Greece. The first one is called Palena, modern Cassandra, the second, Siphonia, and the third is Athos with the holy mountain, mountain Mount Athos. And the cave I'm talking about is situated here on the first leg. Um, here, another map, sorry, this is in Greek. Um, the sanctuary is called, or the cave is belonging to a Sanctuary complex, the sanctuary of Zeus Amon, it's called, and this is located near Aphitos. <clears throat> and why this cave is important? The assignment of a cave, assignment to a cave, 
to a particular deity is not always clear. Especially cults of Dionysus are rarely detectable. The exception, um, the exception, sorry, is the cave of Calithea, which is one of the few securely identified caves of Dionysus in Greece. I exclude here the cults of private character, character that were performed uh, in Roman times in caves. Um, the cave uh, we are dealing now with fits into the Dionysian landscape where the god was associated with several types, like we have woods here, a cave, and a spring. And yeah, this seaside complex combines all those features. This can be linked to Dionysos. Because the cave we are dealing here with was surrounded by woods, we have a waterfall that's not existing anymore today, and it was a really nice area. And also, as Katja Sporn, the director of the German Archaeological Institute, wrote an article about uh, cave sanctuaries in Greece, she suggested that the existence of a water source was one essential reason for the establishment of a cult in a cave in general. Susan Cole stated Dionysus needed caves because caves were a source of the clear water required wine to its proper dilution for consumption. And taking also the mythical childhood into account, which tells us that baby Dionysus was brought uh, after his birth by Hermes to the nymphs of Nisa, and they raised the child in the shelter of the cave, makes also the worship of Dionysus and the nymphs uh, plausible in this context. So just to give you an idea how a cave can be linked to Dionysus. And for this cave, we have fortunately uh, also a literary source. Um, Xenophon is telling us um, in the connection with the death of Agasilapos something, he's saying while he was engaged in this operation at Midsummer, a burning fever seized him, and since he had previously seen the sanctuary of Dionysus at Aphitos, a clear uh, a longing took possession of him at this time for its shady resting places, places and its clear cool waters. <coughs> and yeah, he reached the sanctuary but on the seventh day, he fell sick and he became, um, yeah, and he came to his end outside the sanctuary. So this is telling something uh, us about the therapeutic uh, function also of this place, which is interesting. Um, to the archaeological remains, uh, here you, you see, um, yeah, a view from above how it's located. So the cave is actually here. And later, just <coughs> to, we don't have time to explain everything, there was later established um, a temple of Zeus Amon. And in Roman times, there was another peak of the sanctuary. So there was a bath, which can be associated with the worship of Asclepius also. And as you can see here, um, the whole area was just discovered in the 60s and 70s because they, because they wanted to build a hotel there. So you see it's really, yeah, everyone wants to be at this place. And yeah, here you can see a plan to give you an idea of the cave. So it for, was formed like um, a gallery with two main um, branches that um, meeting here. The one is um, east-west orientation, it's 70 meter long and the other one is now north-south is 11 meter long. And you can see this here, how is it located in the plan. And it's the sanctuary we see it from outside today. It looks like this. It's a little bit scattered because of the later building activities there. So the entrance to the cave is uh, this little narrow one. <laughs> it's really, you have to be really small and tiny to enter it. And yeah, just the remains that we can see today are a staircase leading up to a hollow niche. And the entrance I just showed you was here. Here's a plan of the staircase. Here's also the entrance, and this is a look inside the cave. Uh, inside the cave, there is nothing, there's no evidence for cult activity, unfortunately, but Excavation just took outside uh, place. There was also a geological research about the cave inside and the whole area around. But 
basically, yeah, the area was explored around the staircase. <clears throat> and unfortunately today it's a problem because the, the spring inside the cave was running dry because they piped everything to the nearby hotel and so the, um, <coughs> yeah, that's really, the cave is not in good condition and it's aging and collapsing, um, unfortunately. And yeah, to the staircase, I go first focus on the architectural remains for the staircase, which was um, uh, dated to the fourth century. We can make a nice comparison to another uh, cave of the Nymphs, also located in northern Greece. This is the cave of the Nymphs in Miesa, which also got a little bit like a monumentalization in the fourth century with, with a staircase leading to a niche or another entrance to the cave. So this is here a comparison and I would like to draw. And for the other features we have around, here you can see the cave, the staircase, and there was in the fourth century also established a fountain house next to it because this has a connection with the later temple of Sus Amon because the temple was um, served with water from the cave. Then there was in Roman times a cistern and in late antiquity a water mill. So you can see there was a continuity always using the water of the spring from the cave. Yes, and just to give you here an idea how it looks today, <laughs> it's not really clear. Just uh, here again for you as a focus point, the entrance to the cave and the fountain house was located here. This is part of the system from the Roman times and in front there was the water mill, so everything is a little bit mixed up or you cannot really divide it here if you see it from the first, for the first time. Um, yeah, from the archaeological records, um, unfortunately the layers are often disturbed here caused by the later building activities from the area, but we have pottery from the Bronze Age, indicating an early use. Then we have um, the Skiffoy uh, with uh, concentric circles and then with linear decoration. So this dates us for, to the uh, geometric period. But for the divine presence of Dionysos, um, we have just those shirts. Uh, bearing the name of the god, and they were found outside of the cave, dating to the second half of the uh, 8th century. Then there we have a dedication on an inscribed, uh, it's like an inscribed, inscribed rim of the Athenian red figure Crater. So there are some like this, which, yeah make it clear that um, Dionysos was worshipped here. Then also from the fourth century, we have this marble head. And there was also, yeah, a dedication from a priest of Dionysos, which is also quite interesting, but um, I skipped this <laughs> just to uh, mention it is important. And for the numismatic evidence, Various coin issues of the city of Aphitus implies the presence of Dionysos. Coins from the middle of the 5th century BC depict on the reverse a grapevine with five grapes in an incused square. You see this in the right corner. The picture is not really clear, but you have to trust me here. And this is a symbol which can be linked to Dionysos. And while these early <laughs> coins are showing on the obverse Athena or Aris, um, appears at the first half of the 4th century, then the head of Zeus Amon. This is clear because also we know the temple was built at this time. And on the reverse, there is a Cantharos, which is, can be associated uh, also with the Dionysus here. So this is interesting because we have the existence of both cults together for the 4th century, which can be, yeah, the numismatic evidence is here quite helpful if you want to interpret this like this. And the nymphs are not really uh, re um, visible, also not from the archaeological remains or from the shirts, there's nothing like, but it's just 
Something interesting, if we go to Roman times, there was the city or the colony of uh, Cassandrea, and which incorporated the whole territory where the cave was located. And it's interesting that then they put a picture of the nymph of Nusa there with baby Dionysus on the, on the coins. So there's like, for them, it seemed like it was important to keep the cult alive still. Yeah, to come to an end, um, other cults of Dionysus in a cave um, are just known from literary uh, sources. There was also a cave um, on Euboea. This is in southern Greece. We know just this from Pausanias, for example, and there was maybe also another cave for Dionysus in the Bengayan mountains in Macedonia. But the one we have here is, according to the, the shirts with the inscriptions we found, we can say this is, was dedicated for Dionysus, and the existence of water make it also clear that it was for the nymphs. Uh, we see we, there was a long continuity in use, so maybe it already started in the Bronze Age, we have pottery there, but this is not clear what, um, what the ritual was like. But then it's clear the 8th century Dionysus was present. In the 4th century we have this monumentalization with the staircase leading to the cave. And the whole cave was then incorporated in this whole sanctuary complex with the other temple for Sus Amon and also still maybe in use in Roman times when the sanctuary had a, another peak. Yes. Um, and in reality, we know nothing. The truth is in depth, um, as Democrit is saying. And thank you for your attention. <laughs>